Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Can't You Sleep, Little Bear by Martin Waddell. Once there were two bears, Big Bear and Little Bear. Big Bear is the Big Bear, and Little Bear is the Little Bear. They played all day in the bright sunlight. When night came and the sun went down, Big Bear took Little Bear home to the bear cave. Big Bear put Little Bear in bed in the dark part of the cave. Go to sleep, Little Bear, he said, and Little Bear tried. Big Bear settled in the bear chair and read his bear book by the light of the fire. But Little Bear couldn't go to sleep. Can't you sleep, little bear? Big, asked Big Bear, putting down his bear book, which was just getting to the interesting part, and padded over to the bed. I'm scared, said Little Bear. Why are you scared, Little Bear, said Big Bear. I don't like the dark, said Little Bear. What dark, said Big Bear. The dark all around us, said Little Bear. Big Bear looked, and he saw that the dark part of the cave was very dark. So he went to the lantern cupboard and took out the tiniest lantern that was there. Big Bear lit the tiniest lantern and put it next to Little Bear's bed. There's a tiny light to keep you from being scared, Little Bear, said Big Bear. Thank you, Big Bear, said Little Bear, cuddling up in the glow. Now go to sleep, Little Bear, said Big Bear, and he padded back to the bear chair and settled down to read the bear book by the light of the fire. Little Bear tried to go to sleep, but he couldn't. Can't you sleep, Little Bear, yawned Big Bear, putting down his bear book with just four pages to go to the interesting part, and padded over to the bed. I'm scared, said Little Bear. Why are you scared, Little Bear, said Big Bear. I don't like the dark, said Little Bear. What dark, said Big Bear. The dark all around us, said Little Bear. I brought you a lantern, said Big Bear. Only a teeny weeny one, said Little Bear. There's lots of dark. Big Bear looked, and he saw that Little Bear was quite right. There was still lots of dark. So Big Bear went to the lantern cupboard and took out a bigger lantern. Big Bear lit the lantern and put it beside the other one. Now go to sleep, Little Bear, said Big Bear, and he padded back to his bear chair and settled down to read the bear book by the light of the fire. Little Bear tried to go to sleep, but he couldn't. Can't you sleep, Little Bear, grunted Big Bear, putting down his bear book with just three pages to go and padding over to the bed. I'm scared, said Little Bear. Why are you scared, Little Bear, asked Big Bear. I don't like the dark, said Little Bear. What dark, said Big Bear. The dark all around us, said Little Bear. But I brought you two lanterns, said Big Bear, a tiny one and a bigger one. Not much bigger, said Little Bear, and there's still lots of dark. Bear thought about it, and then he went to the lantern cupboard and took out the biggest lantern of them all, with two handles and a piece of chain. He hooked up the lantern above Little Bear's bed. I've brought you the biggest lantern of them all, he told Little Bear. That's to keep you from being scared. Thank you, Big Bear, said Little Bear, curling up in the glow and watching the shadows dance. Now go to sleep, Little Bear, said Big Bear, and he padded back to the bear chair and settled down to read the bear book by the light of the fire. Little Bear tried and tried and tried to go to sleep, but he couldn't. Can't you sleep, Little Bear, groaned Big Bear, putting down his bear book with just two pages to go and padding over to the bed. I'm scared, said Little Bear. Why are you scared, Little Bear, asked Big Bear. I don't like the dark, said Little Bear. What dark, asked Big Bear. The dark all around us, said Little Bear. But I've brought you the biggest lantern of them all. There isn't any dark left, said Big Bear. Yes, there is, said Little Bear. There is, out there. And he pointed out of the bear cave at the night. Big Bear saw that Little Bear was right. Big Bear was very puzzled. All the lanterns in the world couldn't light up the dark outside. Big Bear thought about it for a long time. Then he said, Come on, Little Bear. Where are we going? asked Little Bear. Out, said Big Bear. Out into the darkness? asked Little Bear. Yes, said Big Bear. 
but I'm scared of the dark, said Little Bear. No need to be, said Big Bear. And he took the Little Bear by the paw, led him out of the cave into the night. And it was dark. Oh, I'm scared, said Little Bear, cuddling up to Big Bear. Big Bear lifted Little Bear and cuddled him and said, Look at the dark, Little Bear. And Little Bear looked. I've brought you the moon, Little Bear, said Big Bear, the bright yellow moon and all the twinkly stars. But Little Bear didn't say anything, for he had gone to sleep, warm and safe in Big Bear's arms. Big Bear carried Little Bear back to the bear cave fast asleep, and he settled down with Little Bear on one arm and the bear book on the other, cozy in the bear chair by the fire. And Big Bear read the bear book right to the end. Hello, this is How Do Dinosaurs Say Goodnight by Jane Yolen and Mark Teague. Now one thing for you parents, the names of the dinosaurs are in all the scenes, so that's a good thing. How does a dinosaur say goodnight when Papa comes in to turn out the light? Does a dinosaur slam his tail and pout? Does he throw his teddy bear all about? Does a dinosaur stomp his feet on the floor and shout, Oh, I hear one book more. Does a dinosaur roar? How does a dinosaur say goodnight when mama comes in to turn out the light? Does he swing his neck from side to side? Does he up and demand a piggyback ride? Does he moan? Does he moan? Does he sulk or does he sigh? Does he fall on the top of the covers and cry? <laughs> no, dinosaurs don't. They don't even try. They give a big kiss. They turn out the light. They tuck in their tails and they whisper, good night. They give a big hug, then one kiss more. Good night. Good night, little dinosaur. And that's the end of that story. And this story is by Robert Munch, and it is called Mortimer. One night, Mortimer's mother took him upstairs to go to bed. Thump, 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 thump. When they got upstairs, Mortimer's mother opened the door to his room. She threw him into bed and said, Mortimer, be quiet. And Mortimer shook his head, yes. The mother shut the door. Then she went back down the stairs. Thump, 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 thump. And as soon as she got back downstairs, Mortimer sang, clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Mortimer's father heard all that noise and he came up the stairs. Thump, 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 thump. And he opened the door and yelled, Mortimer, be quiet. And Mortimer shook his head, yes. The father went back down the stairs, thump, 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 thump. And as soon as he got to the bottom of the stairs, Mortimer sang, clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. 
all of Mortimer's. Seventeen brothers and sisters heard that noise, and they all came up the stairs. Thump, 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 thump. They opened the door and yelled in a tremendous loud voice, Mortimer, be quiet. And Mortimer shook his head, yes. The brothers and the sisters shut the door and went downstairs. Thump, 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 thump. As soon as they got to the bottom of the stairs, Mortimer sang, Clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. They got so upset that they called the police. Two policemen came and they walked very slowly up the stairs. Thump, 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 thump. They opened the door and said in a very deep policeman type voice, Mortimer, be quiet. The policeman shut the door and went back down the stairs. Thump, 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 thump. As soon as they got to the bottom of the stairs, Mortimer sang, clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Well, downstairs, no one knew what to do. The mother got into a big fight with the policeman. The father got into a big fight with the brothers and sisters. Upstairs, Mortimer got so tired waiting for someone to come up that he fell asleep. And that is the end of that story. Time for Bed by Mim Fox. Oops. It's time for bed, little mouse, little mouse. Darkness is falling all over the house. It's time for bed, little goose, little goose. The stars are out and on the loose. It's time for bed, little cat, little cat. Some snuggle in tight. That's right, like that. It's time for bed, little calf, little calf. What happened today that made you laugh? It's time for bed, little foal, little foal. I'll whisper a secret. But don't tell a soul. It's time for bed, little fish, little fish. So hold your breath and make a wish. It's time for bed, little sheep, little sheep. The whole wide world is going to sleep. It's time to sleep, little bird, little bird. So close your eyes. Not another word. It's time to sleep, little bee, little bee. Yes, I love you, and you love me. It's time to sleep, little snake, little snake. Good gracious me, you're still awake. It's time to sleep, little pup, little pup. If you don't sleep soon, the sun will be up. It's time to sleep, little dear, little dear. The very last kiss is almost here. The stars on high are shining bright. Sweet dreams, my darling. Sleep well. Good night. Tell Me Something Happy Before I Go to Sleep by Joyce Dunbar. Willow was tired, so Willow went to bed. She lay with her pillow this way and that way and another way, but Willow couldn't sleep. Willoughby called Willa. Are you there? Yes, answered Willoughby. I'm here. 
I can't sleep, said Willa. Why can't you sleep, asked Willoughby. I'm afraid, said Willa. What are you afraid of, asked Willoughby. I'm afraid that I might have a bad dream, said Willa. Think of something happy. Then you won't have a bad dream, said Willoughby. So Willa tried to think of something happy, but she couldn't. Willoughby, called Willa, are you still there? Yes, answered Willoughby, I'm still here. What can I think of that's happy, asked Willa. Oh, lots of things, said Willoughby. Tell me, tell me something happy before I go to sleep. Willoughby thought for a moment, and then he said, Willa, look under your bed. So Willa leaned over and looked under her bed. What do you see, asked Willoughby. I see my chicken slippers, said Willa. That's right, said Willoughby. And do you know what your chicken slippers are doing? No, said Willa, I don't. They're waiting, just waiting, for nobody's feet but yours. Good, said Willa. That's happy. What else? What do you see on the chair, asked Willoughby. I see my blue and white jumpsuit, said Willa. Do you know what your jumpsuit is doing, asked Willoughby. No, said Willa, I don't. It's longing, just longing for tomorrow, when you will jump out of bed and put it on. Good, said Willa. That's happy. What else? Willoughby picked Willa up in his arms and padded softly downstairs to the kitchen. He opened the pantry door. What do you see on the shelves, asked Willoughby. I see bread and honey and oats and milk and apples, said Willoughby. That's right. All waiting to be made into breakfast for you and me to share. Oh, that's good, said Willa. That's happy. What else? Willoughby carried Willa into the living room and switched on the lamp. What do you see in the corner, asked Willoughby. I see my basket full of toys, said Willa. And what do you think they're doing, asked Willoughby. I don't know, said Willa. They're dreaming, dreaming of tomorrow and the games you're going to play. That's very happy, said Willa. What else? Willoughby carried Willa to the window and opened the curtains wide. What do you see in the darkness, asked Willoughby. I see only the night, said Willa. What do you think the night is doing, asked Willoughby. I don't know, said Willa. The night is waiting, waiting for the morning, which is on its way around the world. That's happy, said Willa. The morning is waiting, too, said Willoughby. What for, asked Willa. Oh, lots of things, said Willoughby. What things, asked Willa. For grass to grow, flowers to bloom, and leaves to flutter. For clouds to float, winds to blow, and sun to shine. For birds to fly, bees to buzz, and ducks to quack. That's a lot of happy things, said Willa. There's just one sad thing, said Willoughby. What's that, asked Willa. The morning is waiting for you, too. It's waiting to wake you up. But I'm awake already, said Willa. That's why it's sad, said Willoughby. The morning likes waking you up, and that's what makes the morning happy. Willoughby, said Willa. What's that, asked Willoughby. I'm tired. So Willoughby carried Willa back to bed. What do you see in your bed, asked Willoughby. I see my bear, said Willa. And what do you think he's doing, asked Willoughby. Waiting for me to snuggle up with him, said Willa. That's right, said Willoughby. Waiting especially for you. And when the morning comes and wakes me up, will you still be here, asked Willa. I'll still be here, said Willoughby. Good, said Willa. That's the happiest thing of all. Good night, Willa. But Willa didn't answer. She was sound asleep. And that's the end. This is Mother, Mother, I Want Another by Maria Polushkin. It was bedtime in the mouse house. Mrs. Mouse took Baby Mouse to his room and helped him put on his pajamas. She told him to brush his teeth. She tucked him into his bed and read him a bedtime story. She gave him a bedtime kiss and then she said, 
Good night. But as she was leaving, Baby Mouse started to cry. <laughs> Why are you crying? asked Mrs. Mouse. I want another mother. Another mother, cried Mrs. Mouse. Where will I find another mother for my baby? Mrs. Mouse ran to get Mrs. Duck. Please, Mrs. Duck, come to our house and help put Baby Mouse to bed. Tonight, he wants another mother. So Mrs. Duck came and sang a song. Quack, quack, Mousy, don't you fret. I'll bring you worms, fat and wet. But Baby Mouse said, Mother, Mother, I want another. So Mrs. Duck went to get Mrs. Frog. Mrs. Frog came and sang a song. Croak, croak, Mousy, close your eyes. I will bring you big fat flies. But Baby Mouse said, Mother, Mother, I want another. So Mrs. Frog went to get Mrs. Pig. Mrs. Pig came and sang a song. Oink, oink, mousy, go to sleep. I'll bring some carrots for you to keep. But Baby Mouse said, Mother, mother, I want another. Mrs. Pig went to get Mrs. Horse. Mrs. Horse came and sang a song. Nay, nay, Mousy, hush a bye. I'll sing for you a lullaby. But Baby Mouse had had enough. No more mothers, he shouted. I want another kiss. Oh, really? Well, now, indeed. Oh. So, Mrs. Duck kissed Baby Mouse. Mrs. Frog kissed Baby Mouse. Mrs. Pig kissed Baby Mouse. And Mrs. Horse kissed Baby Mouse. Then Mrs. Mouse gave Baby Mouse a drink of water. She tucked in his blanket and she gave him a kiss. Baby Mouse smiled and said, May I have another, Mother? Of course, said Mrs. Mouse, and she leaned over and gave him another kiss. The end. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel.